Can you believe it? The wait is finally over. Let's crack open this bad boy. All right, so we are going to crack this open. My handy dandy knife, that's all I actually have on me right now, but let's bust this open. So this is the tool only version. I had no interest in the accessories. The accessories for most pressure washers suck. So why am I gonna spend extra money for that? So this is from what I understand the most popular version of this product because it already sold out. So this, this tool only version is not gonna be available again until after the first of the year. The one with all the accessories, it's like 20, 30 bucks more or whatever is available. But before I get into this, if you don't know what this is, this is the follow-up to the Active VE52, which took the detailing industry by storm. It was just unbelievable the fact that you can get close to two gallons a minute at around 1,000 to 1,100 PSI, which is about twice what people are getting from like little Ryobi units and other things like that. So you're getting close to Kranzler numbers, and that thing was about 250. Now I had mine, it had the famous surging issue <clears throat> that they all have, unfortunately. So I stopped using it for my business about, eh, about five months ago. So it's just been in my garage here. I still use it, but it just doesn't work for my business. So I'm really excited for this because I waited about two months. I've probably been two months or longer. So anyways, <clears throat> let's open this up. This is gonna be my first time seeing it. All right, so we got information, tips, I believe these are 3.7 or 3.7, yep. You got your cable, it's gonna have a long cable. Some packaging here. It looks like this thing is pretty small, which is nice, uh, being that I'm using this in my truck setup. So I'm gonna be running this gravity fed. And here she is. All right, let's get rid of this. Here we got our power cable. Man. All right. Well, guys, there she is. Man, that is small. Definitely smaller than I was expecting. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Much better view. Show you the pump. This is an exposed pump here. Like I said, this is where your inlet is gonna come from, from your hose or from your tank if you're running it in a mobile detailing setup. M22 out, this is gonna be for your pressure washer hose. And by the looks of it, this is not going to cause any issues with my current setup. If you remember in my truck setup, I said, uh, in my truck setup video, I said that I thought it was gonna cause issues where the inlets are, but it looks like it's gonna work just fine, actually, just the way it is. So I'm really excited to check this out. You see it's a beautiful design, nice and sturdy. We got a different type of button up here. The last one had an LED button, which was causing issues. This one is just a waterproof regular button. It says 2.0 on the side, looking nice. You can store your tips there, which I actually will. I do store my tips on there. You get some information and you get your 3.7 orifice tips. I am going to get the uh, DIY nozzle guard set up with a 3.7 or 4.0 tip. I just gotta order that. And the cable itself, I'm not sure, but I would assume it's somewhere in the range of 30 feet. That's what the last one was. So let's go ahead and pop this into the truck. All right, so there it is. Like I said, I got my 60 gallon tank in here, gravity fed right into my Ryobi pressure washer here. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out, connect the active right there, let's do it. Okay, as you can probably see, it's hooked up to the inlet. Pressure washer whip from the reel. Don't worry, I'm gonna figure all this out, the management later. It's not that important to me, it's connected over here. I gotta see if this has the same thing that the last pressure washer had. On the last one, you had to hit the GFCI every time you turned it on. I really hated that because on my Ryobi one, it's already set to be on. So on this one, I might have to push that on every time, but whatever, first world problems. Okay, so first things first, crack this open. There's the water filling up in the tube. So one thing that I like to do to bleed the system and make sure 
that the gravity feeding is going to work. Let's take my tube, open it up, make sure I'm allowing water to flow through that tube. That means that it's flowing down from the tank. I'm gonna close that off. Let's go ahead and start the generator and then we'll go ahead and try it. So let's see if I push this button, if it starts. Okay, now yeah, see this is automatically off. Now it's on with the green light, you can see. That's unfortunate. First world problems, I guess. So we're gonna go over here, and we are going to press that power button and see how long it takes to, to prime. Like I said, it's just up on some 4x6s down here. 4x6s straight into the active 2.0 on a 50 foot hose reel. Uber flex hose. Let's get the air out of the line. Uh oh, what happened? What happened? Did it pop the breaker? Breaker's back on. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. We're not getting anything. All right, so a little update. It actually popped the breaker. Uh, my 30 amp, actually, but it was while my air compressor was going, so that makes sense. This thing pulls close to 20 amps, um, I believe, with the 3.7 tip. So hopefully with the 4.0, it pulls less. Um, but here we go. Anyways, it's working. So it's certainly got a higher level of output than my Ryobi. It's definitely quieter, but I am going to have to run. Uh, I'm also gonna have to bring my Ryobi with me for a little while because I wanna make sure I'm not gonna run into any issues. So that's pretty much as far as I'm gonna go in this video, guys. Uh, I will keep you guys updated over the next coming weeks uh, and let you know how it's working. So to see if it works for you guys in a uh, gravity feed system. So thank you guys, all my Stay Stuck family. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for coming back to another video. You guys have a good one, right? Peace. Stay slick. Let's get it.